Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to everybody. Yeah. What a great turnout on this first day of 2023. Stand with us. Let's sing Joy in the House of the Lord.
I want to make one announcement. Or if the week is less, less is it back there way real big, less? Y'all be sure and call him. Everybody be sure and call Les this week. And, uh, and, uh, and thank him for being the, uh, the elder of the week. And, uh, and uh, share a prayer request with him or ask him to come visit. Whatever you need to. Everybody. Pie. Chocolate pie. Chocolate pie. Yeah, if you need chocolate pie, you just reach out to Brother Les. Uh, the other announcement that I want to make in the short term is this, and that is that next Sunday night, January 8th, we're going to meet here. And I'll talk about it in just a few minutes, but uh, we're going to have several topics that I want to share uh, on, on January 8th as we start out the new year and look forward to the new year. I will just say to you that in February, we're not going to be here. We're going to be in the other place. And I talked about an email. Maybe you've gone by there to see it. Uh, so we won't be here. Uh, and I will tell you, I don't have any other information yet. The pastor went on vacation on Wednesday, and he's gone until about Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. It was Christmas time, and, and we'll hear back from him uh, just as soon as possible, and we'll share that with you. So those couple things, uh, can I ask that we stand and worship again together with Praise 247? Thank you for being here. We're introducing two new songs. Stand with us, please. Introducing two new songs. You know, we talk a lot about grace, and grace is God giving to us that which we do not deserve. But mercy is a really big thing for us in our Christian life too. And that is him withholding from us that which, that which we fully deserve. And this song, we just love it. Good morning, mercy. If you need mercy or you've experienced mercy, sing this with us. Tomorrow's gonna break Cause you hold it all 
What about miracle power? Do any of you need that this morning? Sing this with me. Like I won't make it I call on Jesus 
Wow. The truth of those songs don't light your fire, then your wood's wet. Amen. I think I've got the verses up there today. Lamentations 3. Do you need these verses this morning? Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish. Have you struggled this week? Have you struggled this month? It's the Lord's faithful love that keeps us from perishing. For His mercies never end. They're new. Every morning. <laughs> Every morning, every Sunday morning, every first day of the week, every January 1st, every beginning of a new year, every beginning of a new century, every morning when we wake up, His mercies are new for us every single morning. Every single day is a brand new day in the presence of God. Amen. Happy new day to you. you. Pray with me. Father, we believe. We believe, Father, in your miracle working power. We believe in it. But we call it out today, Father. We call out to you, Father, in boldness and with power and with humility. Father, we bring to you the frailty of our lives and the frailty of our sins. And go, God, at the foot of the cross of Jesus. We call out for mercy. And you give it to us every single morning, every single day, perhaps every single hour. You give us brand new mercy and we praise you for it. In this season, Father, this, this holiday season, is, it's a difficult time for folks. Lord, we come to you today. We don't come to you arrogantly or proudly or boastfully. Father, we come to you in humility, with brokenness of heart. We bring to you, Father, our heavy burdens. And I'll list these and give you the opportunity to call yours out. Let's pray for Bootsy's family and the death of her mom and for Aubrey's family and the death of her grandfather. Pray for David Vyatt, who was in the hospital this week, and he is home now. We had a praise from Hal's mom that the, the cancer was contained and not spread. In the quietness of this moment, would you whisper out or call out or whatever you need to do, the, the call of your heart. of sick folks during this season and that sickness has hung around. Father, we pray for our people, a bunch of our people who are out today who are sick. Father, would you bring them healing? Father, if they are, happen to be watching today on Facebook Live, Lord, I pray that they would sense and know your power and your healing and your spirit in their lives. Anyone else? say to you today right now and in song we simply say thank you Jesus in his name we pray and everybody whispered out Amen. does anybody like room temperature coffee <laughs> serious question I do you like room temperature coffee oh <laughs> Anyways, what I was going with that was Clay was talking about, you know, if that doesn't get you excited and your wood's wet or whatever. And I was thinking most people like hot or cold coffee, um, not room temperature coffee. And I feel like the world and even us as a church have, and not just this church, but the church, 
have gotten very lukewarm. Um, we're a little bit too scared to be hot for Jesus. Um, and all of our songs today, we've been talking about the joy that the Lord gives us and the mercy that he just allows us to have so we don't get what we do deserve because that would be awful if we got what we deserve, y'all, because that's hell. Um, so just all the songs we're singing today and just the word that's brought today, Lord, like, y'all just let it reach your heart and really think, am I lukewarm or am I on fire for Jesus? Am I doing what he's called me to do, who he's called me to be? So. <laughs> Yeah. 
kind of one of those Selah moments, isn't it? Let's stop and think about that for a minute. Stop and enter the new year thinking about that. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood applied to my account, giving me a balance before God of zero. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 22. I want to ask you a question do you, how many of you all remember the daytime soap opera as the world turns? You've heard, I, I hear you, Robert. Now, <laughs> now, I don't know about you, Robert, but not, that's not the one I was addicted to. Oops. <laughs> as the world turns was a daytime soap opera that aired from 1954 to 2010. 56 years running soap opera. In 1 Kings chapter 22 this morning, we have kind of a as the world turns moment. I don't know. I didn't watch it. I, I, I wasn't addicted. I, I was confessing that, but I was not addicted to any soap operas. I could turn them on and turn them off anytime I wanted to. <laughs> but I think as the world turns just gave the notion that the world is turning, isn't it? The world is turning, life is churning, events come and events go. We kind of have that as the world turns picture this morning. I want to bring you uh, up to context just a little bit. Go ahead and show the first chart here. I've, I've drawn a chart. I started drawing it out. I don't want to confuse you, but you remember the nation of Israel. First king was King Saul. He was gone, and then it was King David. King David had a son, Solomon, and under those three kings, the nation of Israel was unified. But after King Solomon, the, the nation of Israel split in half. The northern part was called, and I've got that, we're going to talk today about King Ahab, which was in the northern part of the kingdom. I'll show you what that looks like on the map in just a second. That is known as the kingdom or the nation of Israel. The southern part of the kingdom split under Rehoboam initially. Today we're going to talk about Jehoshaphat. He was in the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was two little tribes down here, and it was known as Judah. If you've got your notes and you want to fill those out, the northern kingdom under uh, started under Jeroboam. The first was known as uh, Israel, and the bottom part was known as Judah. I've got a map here of the split kingdom. You'll basically see that right here just above uh, uh, Jerusalem, and then down by the Dead Sea, this is Judah. It's a big chunk of land, but it only has two tribes. The northern part is Israel, and it has ten tribes. And it, it came by and by when the, the kingdom split that there was a city. Show this other, uh, other map. So you kind of see here in the color, we're talking about the split here. There was a city named Ramoth Gilead. And another king, a king of Aram, way up there at the top, had come and taken control of the city of Ramoth Gilead. With that, you have the context of 1 Kings chapter uh, 22. Join me there, please. There was a lull, of, verse 1, there was a lull of three years without war between Aram and Israel. Let me ask you the question. Did you watch the news this week? Do we see that there are wars or rumors of wars? Man, it's been that way for a long time. Nations have constantly been battling. There was a lull of three years without war between Aram and Israel. Go back up to the map. Uh, 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 I'll just leave it there for a second. There was a war between Israel and Aram over the city of Ramoth Gilead. However, in the third year, King Jehoshaphat in the south... Uh, went of Judah, the king of Judah, went to visit the king of Israel. The king of Israel has said to his servants, Don't you know that Ramoth Gilead is ours? 
but we're doing nothing to take it back from the king of Aram. So we asked Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to fight Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat went up from Jerusalem up to Samaria, which was the headquarters right there. It was the capital city of the northern kingdom. He went to visit him. After all, they were, they were cousins and brothers. They were all Jews. And he went up there to visit him. And while he was there, King Ahab said in the north, the northern kingdom, he said, man, Ramoth Gilead, Aram's taking that thing and we need to go take it. Will you help me? Jehoshaphat, verse still in the verse 4, Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, Look, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Sure, we're cousins. It's all of our land. It was given to us. I will help you. 1 Kings 22, verse uh, 5. But Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Can we first ask what the Lord's will is? Capital L, lower capital O-R-D, Lord, it's the word Yahweh. Can we just check, can we just ask before we go back to war, can we check and see what Yahweh God has to say about it? And so the king of Israel, uh, verse 6, the king of Israel gathered the prophets. Prophets, you know, men who speak for God, the prophets of God. Uh, the king of Israel gathered the prophets, about 400 of them, and asked them, should I go against Ramoth Gilead for war or should I refrain? Before we go before into war, let's try to get some wise counsel. Can we do that? Jehoshaphat says to King Ahab. So at the end of verse 6, the 400 prophets got together and replied, march up and the Lord will hand it over to the king. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Let's go take Ramoth Gilead back. Verse 7. But Jehoshaphat said, um, Isn't there a prophet of the Lord here anymore? Let's ask him. Now, I don't know what Lord, I don't know what God your prophets reached out to, but can we not, isn't there anybody who can speak on behalf of the God of Israel, Yahweh God, the creator of all the earth? Can somebody not consult with him? Verse 8, the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Yeah, there's still one man who can inquire of the Lord. Verse 8, but I hate him. Because he never prophesies good about me, only disaster. He is Micaiah, son of Imla. I want to offer to you this first point. And the first point is if you are known to be a person who inquires of God, you can expect some hatred. You can expect some people not to like you. You can expect the whole world not to love you and get along with you. Jehoshaphat, uh, Ahab said, yeah, there's one guy, but I hate him. And the reason I hate him is because he's always speaking evil against me. The end of verse 8, the king shouldn't say that. I'm not sure I put the end there. The king said, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't say that. I can almost imagine Jehoshaphat looking at King Ahab over his glasses and saying, can, can I make sure we understand here? Did you tell me that the prophet of the Lord always says bad stuff about you? <laughs> uh, maybe Ahab, you should, maybe you should listen up. Maybe you should take notice. Maybe you should hear what the king or what, the, what that prophet has to say. I hate him because he never prophesies. And then the end of the verse, King says, you shouldn't be saying that. We're talking about the God. We're talking about Yahweh God. You shouldn't be saying that. Anytime that you and I take a stand for the truth, it's entirely possible that people are going, frankly, to hate us. Do you remember John, Jesus saying this in John chapter 15? If the world hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. Don't take it too personal. If you're standing for the truth, if you're standing for me, if you're standing for my word, don't take it too personal. If, you're, if you get hated because I was hated too, I'll admit before you. And the prophets that were before me, they were hated as well. So verse 9, the king of Israel said, okay, I guess, let's see if we can get that guy up here. The, the king of Israel called an officer and said, hurry and get Micaiah, son of Imla. You ever heard of him? No, you probably haven't. He only appears right here in 1 Kings chapter 22. 
Now the king of Israel and king of Jehoshaphat of Judah were clothed in royal attire, and they were each sitting on his throne. They were on the fleshing, uh, threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets were prophesying in front of them. Do you get to see we're at the front work to get welcome to Samaria at the city gates? Here we are. The people are gathered. The prophets are gathered. The kings are gathered. They have their royal attire. King Jehoshaphat is sitting here in his royal throne. And King Ahab is sitting here in his royal throne. And all the prophets are saying, let's go up. We can take reign with Gilead. And some messenger goes somewhere, some obscure place, and finds Micaiah. The son of Imla, uh, son of Imla. Verse eleven. Then Zedekiah, son of Chenina, made iron horns and said, "This is what the Lord says: You will gore the Arameans with the, with these until they're finished off." I just looked on Google and found a set of iron horns. He made these horns and brought them to the king and said, "Look." We're going to take these out and we're going to kick their other loving tails. We're going to beat them with these horns. We're going to defeat them. That's what Zedekiah said. This is what the Lord, this is what the Lord says. You'll gore the Arameans. Verse 12. And all the prophets were prophesying the same thing. March up to reign with Gilead and succeed. For the Lord will hand it over to the king. We're good. 400 of us. Let's go. Meanwhile, verse 13, the messenger who went to call Micaiah instructed him, Look, the words of the prophets are unanimously favorable for the king. So let your words be like their words and speak favorably. Hey, Micaiah, my name's Bob and I'm here from the king on official business. And the king wants you to come and talk to him and tell him about us going up to reign with Gilead. Now, I want to just make sure you understand. When you get there, there are 400 prophets, and all of them are unanimous. They believe and know and have told the king unmistakably that we're going to take Reign of Gilead. And I just want you to know it's probably in your best interest when you go talk to the king. You probably need to speak favorably and unanimously, and you need to agree with the king. Now, I will just tell you point number two. You will always face the peer pressure of popular opinion in your life. Popular opinion will always be there, and quite possibly it will not be aligned with what the Lord God says. You understand, but you understand, Micaiah? You head it up. You head it up there. I just wanted to let you know what you're going to face when you get there. When you get there, you probably need to speak favorably and unanimously to the king with everybody else so that we're all of one accord. I'm just warning you, Micaiah. I'm just saying this is probably how it ought to be. What do you think Micaiah says? Verse 14, Micaiah said, As the Lord lives... That's our as the world turns moment. Because I'm going to tell you, that is the crux of the matter. The crux of the matter is, does the Lord live or not? Because I'm going to tell you, if the Lord lives, Micaiah is saying, I don't have any choice in what I say when I go to the king. Not if the Lord lives. Today, if the Lord lives, I can no longer be lukewarm. I can no longer stand on this side of the fence and this side of the fence. I can no longer be halfway in. I can no longer be halfway committed. I can no longer say. I can no longer do. I can no longer go. I must be careful, little feet, where I go. I must be careful, little hands, what I do. I must be careful, little ears, what I hear. I must be careful, little eyes, what I see. It's what I, what I see. Why? I must be careful, little eyes, what I look at. Because the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little feet, what you do. I talked at Christmas time about, about Emmanuel and that beautiful term. It means God is with us. And I personalized it and said, God is with me. And I gave us a, a card. Maybe I have a card in my pocket. Is it there? There it is with my Kleenex. The God is with me. 
The crux of the matter, is the Lord with us? Is the Lord there or not? The, as the Lord lives, that's their as the world turns moment. The Lord was here before I got here. The Lord is here while I'm on earth. And he's going to be here while I'm gone. The Lord lives in his presence. And we, great, we get great strength and comfort from the truth that God is with us us but in addition to that strength and that comfort that we get that God is with us there's also the truth Clayton you, you're accountable son that same Lord God that is looking down in love he's looking down at you he, he is living he is right there beside you and beside you and in front of you and behind you he is above you he is below you carrying you if the Lord lives Clayton you're no longer the same you can't do it anymore you can't say what you want to say you can't write your checks for bills for whatever you want to. You've got to write the checks for what God has told you. If the Lord lives, if the Lord lives, I'm no longer in charge of the funds, the finances that he gave to me. They're his finances, and he's now in charge, and he tells me what to do. I no longer have the opportunity to decide if and when and where I'm going to church. I don't have that opportunity. He has spoken. If the Lord lives, he has spoken. The word Lord means that he is the master and I am the servant. And he tells me what to do and I do it. <laughs> servant, thank you. Let me pat you on the back. Thank you for coming and telling me what the political climate is up there with King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat. Thank you, servant, for coming and telling me what the religious climate is. Thank you for telling me what all the religious leaders are saying. But let me just pause for one second and say to you, you remember that the downfall of the nation of Israel was primarily caused by failed spiritual leadership. The leaders, the religious leaders, began to compromise on the truth. Can I get an amen? Amen. The religious leaders began to compromise. That was the beginning of the failure of the nation of Israel. And 400 of them had heard from the Lord and said, Go up, we can take them. And Micaiah said, I thank you for sharing with this with me. Thank you for telling me about the climate. But I just want you to know, as the Lord lives, I can't say whatever I want to say. I will say whatever the Lord says for me to say. I don't have the freedom to say, uh, okay, Micaiah, yeah, it's up to you, my brother, but I just want you to know that if you go up there, they might put you in jail. Yeah, but the Lord God lives. Uh, they might, uh, Micaiah, I want you to understand, they might chop your head off and take your life. I want you to understand, they might take my life, but my, my life is in the hands of the Lord who lives. And I must do and say whatever God tells me to say. Verse 14. Now, I'm just going to tell you, this is my favorite part of the story. Verse 15. So he went to the king, and the king asked him, Okay, Micaiah, remember this is the prophet that uh, Ahab hated because he always said bad things about him. Okay, he went to the king, and the king asked him, Micaiah, should we go to Ramoth Gilead for war, or should we refrain? You ready? Micaiah told him, march up and succeed. The Lord will hand it over to the king. I didn't expect that, did you? I thought maybe Micaiah would tell him something different. Micaiah shows up and says, hey, look, king, you have 400 of the smartest, wisest, prophetess, religious men that you can possibly get, and all 400 of them have told you to go up against Reign of Gilead. Uh, who am I? I'm little Micaiah, the son of Emma. I was just over here minding my own business. I wasn't trying to get in the middle of it. Who am I to say, if all of your prophets say that you need to go up and, and take Reign of Gilead, boom, you need to take off and go. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Verse 16, this is pretty amazing. But the king said to him, how many times must I make you swear not to tell me anything but the truth in the name of the Lord? Micaiah, how many times have you come in my presence and I've given you a Bible and made you put your hand on the Bible and swear to tell the truth, the, uh, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? How many times have I done it? Over and over and over. Micaiah, listen to me, young man. I hear you saying, yes, we need to agree with the 400 prophets of Israel, but I'm telling you, I called you up here because I'm expecting you to tell me the truth. 
Isn't that remarkable? This is the king who hated Micaiah because he always spoke the truth. And he comes and agrees with the 400 prophets. And the king says, I know better than that. I know, I know better than that. Point number four, though they may deny or hate or reject it, are you ready? The world desperately wants to hear the truth. Amen? Amen. And what do we have? We may not sit on the truth. They may hate us. They might throw us in prison. They might chop our heads off. But the world desperately desires to hear the truth. You remember Jesus saying in John chapter 8, You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And a person who is not walking in the truth, they know and understand that they are walking in bondage. And they are desperately calling out for somebody to speak the truth to them. You'll know the truth, and it's the truth that will set you free. The king said, I'm going to read that verse again. The king said to him, how many times must I swear to you, young man, don't you come here in my presence and tell me anything but the truth in the name of the Lord. Micaiah says, okay, <laughs> here goes. <laughs> Let me just tell you the truth, man, king. You want the truth? Here's the truth. So Micaiah said, I saw, verse 17, I saw all Israel. In other words, I had this, I had this, here's, here's, here's what the Lord told me. Look, I was praying about this king, and, and here's what I saw. I had this vision. And I saw all Israel scattered on the hills. All of the army men, all of the servicemen, all of the armies of, the, of the, both kingdoms, they were out there scattered on the hills. They were in their positions. They were hidden. They were ready for war. They were ready to take reign of Gilead. I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. Ahab, I ain't trying to be mean or nothing, but you're the shepherd. And in my vision, I saw all of Israel going out to war. And when they got out to war, they looked around and they didn't have a king anymore because their king was gone. Sorry, Ahab. That's what the Lord told me. And the Lord said that they have no master. Let everyone return home in peace. In this vision, I saw that you were gone out of the picture, King Ahab. And I saw everybody say, oh, we better retreat. We better go back home. We better get back to the house. Verse 18, so the king of Israel, Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, see, didn't I tell you he never prophesies anything good about me, but only disaster? And again, I can almost imagine Jehoshaphat looking over his glasses thinking, maybe you need to heed him once in a while. Maybe you need to listen to this guy. Then uh, verse 19, Micaiah keeps going. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. Here's what I saw. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. That's where he sits. Sits. And the whole heavenly army was standing by him at his right hand and his left hand. I saw this vision. I don't know if it really happened, but this is what the Lord to me said, saw, showed me. The king, the Lord, was sitting on his throne, and there were people all around him, and they were having this business meeting. They were having this conversation. Verse 20, and the Lord said, um, Who will entice Ahab to march up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? The Lord saw what was going to happen. He saw that Micaiah, he saw that Ahab was going to go up and go against Ramoth Gilead and that they were going to fall. So one was saying this and another was saying that. They were writing stuff on the whiteboard and they were having a business meeting and everybody was getting their shot, shotgun ideas. Verse 21, then a spirit came forward, stood in the Lord's presence and said, I can entice him. I can entice King Ahab. The Lord said, how are you going to do that? The Lord asked him how, verse 22. He said, I will, you ready? I will go and become a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. I'll find some people who claim to be the prophets of God, and I'll go, I'll go give them a half-truth. I'll go water down the truth. I'll go to those prophets, and I will, with a lying tongue, I will tell them a lie. Wow. The Lord asked him, how are you going to do it? He said, I'll go become a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then he said, God said to this, this messenger, this spirit, he said, you will certainly entice him and prevail. Go and do that. So that's exactly what that prophet, that's exactly what that spirit did. It went and it enticed and told a lie to those 400 prophets. Micaiah is saying, here's what happened in this situation, King Ahab. Here's what's going on. You see, the Lord has, verse 23 
You see, the Lord has put a line. This is Micaiah talking to the king, and all 400 prophets were standing there listening. He says, you see, king, the Lord has put a lying spirit into the mouth of all of these prophets of yours, and the Lord has pronounced disaster against you. Then Zedekiah, he's the guy that made the iron horns and said, we're going to take the horns out, out there and we're going to defeat the army. Zedekiah of Tanana spoke up, came up, he slapped M Micaiah on the cheek and he demanded him, hey, did the spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you? All 400 prophets, let me see if I got this straight, Micaiah. Slap him on the cheek. Let me see if I got this straight, young man. Are you saying that all 400 of us have been deceived by a lying spirit? And you have a corner on the truth. So you're the guy. So all of the rest of us, we didn't really hear from the Lord, but you heard from the Lord. Is that what you're telling us? Is that what you're telling us, you narrow-minded Bible thumper? You think you have a corner on the truth? Micaiah said, look, I'm just sharing what the Lord told me to say. Slapped him on the cheek. Did the Spirit of the Lord leave all of us to speak to you? Verse 25, Micaiah replied, you will soon see when you go to hide in an inner chamber on that day. Here's what's going to happen. It's going to be fulfilled, and you're going to, you're going to war. We're going to war. You're going to war. And, and, and King Ahab is going to get killed. And you know where you're going to find yourself, Zedekiah, with your iron horns? You're going to find yourself hiding in the closet somewhere. Because you realize that I was right, and you were wrong. Verse 26, then the king of Israel ordered, I think I've got that one up there. The king of Israel ordered, here's what I want you to do, guys. Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, this is what the king says. Put this guy in prison and feed him only a little bread and water until I come back safe. Now, I don't teach that young man for speaking evil against me. I want you to take him. I want you to lock him up in jail. And I want you to feed him a little bread and a little water. I want you to starve him to death and barely, barely keep him alive. I wonder if Makai at that moment was thinking, wow, does the Lord live or not? <laughs> uh, I tried to stand up and, and do what's right and keep the truth. And, and now this is what's going to happen to me? So, so number five, I will say to you, point number five, speaking the truth might land you in jail or worse. Wow. We don't like that, do we? Not in America. Not in 2023. Welcome to 2023. We don't want that in America, do we? Standing up for the truth might end you up in jail or worse. The question, the crux of the matter is, does the Lord live or not? As the Lord lives, I've got to do what the Lord tells me to do. Put this guy in prison and feed him a little water and a little bit of bread until I come back safely. But Micaiah said, verse 28, Micaiah said, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. I got it, king. I understand. If you take me to jail and starve me to death and you come back safely, then I have not been truthful. I understand. But I want you to understand, king, if you go to war and don't come back, then the Lord has spoken the truth through me. Micaiah said, if you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. And then he said, then he said at the end of verse 28, as they put him in handcuffs, and as they marched him between the kings and the 400 prophets on his way to the jailhouse, with his hands tied, knowing that he was going to be starved to death, he said at the end, he said, listen, all you people. Hey, watch and see whether the truth of the Lord comes to pass or not. Watch and see. I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail because I have spoken the truth. But I had to speak the truth because the Lord lives. Maybe the king will starve me to death in jail. He may starve me to death, but I know the Lord who lives. I must speak the truth. I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to tell you what, what happens in the rest of the story. Please go home and read the rest of 1 Kings chapter 22. I will tell you that the next section is titled Ahab's Death. It came to happen just exactly like Micaiah said it would happen.
I mentioned earlier, this is the only time you hear about Micaiah. We never hear about him again. What happened to Micaiah? He was in jail, perhaps being starved to death. At some point, word got around that King Ahab was dead. Did all the prophets get together and say, hmm, we were wrong, Micaiah was right, let's let that boy out of jail? What do you think the chances of that are? Ahab's son, Ahaziah, became to the throne. He comes to the throne and somebody probably says, hey, Ahaziah, do you remember that Micaiah prophesied a bad about your dad and it came true and he was the true prophet? Should we let him out of jail? I imagine Ahaziah perhaps said, absolutely not. He's responsible for my dad's death. He's the one who prophesied against my dad. Let him sit there and rot in jail. We don't know what happened to Micaiah. Maybe somebody spoke on his behalf and said, yes, Micaiah was right. Let's get him. Let, let him, let's let him go. I don't know. We never hear from him again. Perhaps he lost his life in jail. But I'm going to tell you, his name showed up in the Holy Scriptures and we're reading it thousands of years later. Why? Because as the Lord lives, I don't have the opportunity to say what I want to say, to go where I want to go, to do what I want to go. I am now, I am under the umbrella, I am under the jurisdiction of the Lord who lives. And he tells me what to do. He tells me whether to be faithful or not. He tells me whether to be generous or not. He tells me whether to be present or not. He tells me whether to get involved or not. He tells me whether to speak out and how and when to speak out against the culture. The Lord lives. I'm not under my own control. I am under the control of the Lord. As the Lord lives, he's the one who gives us the direction. January 1st, 2023, what a great day to choose. The crux of the matter for your life and my life is very simply, does the Lord live or not? Because if the Lord lives, I'm not the same anymore. If the Lord lives, I'm different. How? In every single area of my life. Remember Joshua at the end of his many years after he led the people over into Israel? Remember Joshua's words? I think I've got those up here. Skip that one, Rollins. I left it out. You can read it later. <laughs> Joshua said to the people, this was right before he died, if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, if you decide that you're not going to worship the Lord with your life, then choose who you are going to worship because you're going to serve somebody. You're going, to, you're going to answer to a God. I don't know what God that is, but you go ahead and choose. If it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, choose for yourself today. Which will you worship? The gods your ancestors worship? The, God, the Euphrates River? The old-timey God? Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living now? You're now. The gods that they're worshiping is not the same gods that your forefathers worship. You decide. You choose. Doesn't matter to me. You choose. And then he gives us those incredible words. But as for me and my family, we will worship the Lord God. Will you pray with me? The song is I have decided to follow Jesus. Today I just can't thank you enough for those words. There's, it's, there's, it's no longer time for lukewarmness, for half in, half out for playing the game or checking off the boxes. The decision now on January 1, 23, 1, 1, 2, 3, is whether or not you and I believe that the Lord lives right now in our lives. And if he does, perhaps today, each of us, starting with me, needs to renew the commitment. I have indeed decided to follow Jesus. Father, I I know this truth was for me. I know that when my former pastor sent me this verse of scripture a couple of weeks ago, I knew it was for me and believed it was for our church. As the Lord lives, I must say whatever the Lord tells me to say. Because you live in my life, Father, I must go wherever you tell me to go. I must do what you tell me to do. I must give as you tell me to give. I must be generous 
as you tell me to be generous. I must stand on the truth when you tell me to stand on the truth. Once again today on January 1, Father, as our church begins a new year and it begins a new chapter in our lives, may we, Father, unreservedly and unapologetically decide, I have decided to follow Jesus. We pray in his sweet and loving name. Will you stand with me? Sing that with us.
So where do you start? The word. You start. Who said the word? Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, I'll say whatever the Lord says to me. How are we going to know what the Lord says to us without finding out? Amen? Amen. And so this is my challenge to you for the new year. I would like to challenge everybody in our church to read through the Bible in two years. Now, not one year. I just want to call out Teresa, Jean, and Robert. Did you finish? Did you make it? They're going to finish it today. They're one day late of reading through the entire Bible in one year. Amen? Amen. 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 What a tremendous... Uh, what a tremendous effort that is. I will say to you, I've heard them say a dozen times this year, man, that's hard. That's a lot. But if we take the Bible and split it in half and read it in two years, it makes it half the, twice the fun, half the work, twice the fun. And so to that point, I'm going to challenge everybody to read through the Bible in two years. And here's the, here's the opportunities that you have. In the back, if you trust yourself with a big, great big six-page uh, thing that gives you every day for the next two years, you're wel welcome to take one of those pockets. Lori's printed them out. If we need some more, we can. It looks something like that. Th that's one way that you can do it. The second way that you can do it is on your mobile phone. If you have our church center app on the front page, go ahead, there it is. The front page, the front screen, every week, Lori is going to put for us the first, th that week's, uh, readings, and you'll notice the reading is so. For today, you would read Genesis chapter one one through chapter two verse three. That's one chapter and three verses. It'll take about three and a half minutes to read that, and then you would read Psalm one as well. And by the time the year is over we'll, with, we will have read half the Bible, and we will have read Psalms. I think I read. I think I remember four times in Proverbs, two times, or something like that. The third way is that on the back of your bulletin today, Lori has gone ahead and printed this week's verse, this week's passage. In two years, if we'll stay at it, we can read through the Bible. That is, what's your name, Leanne? You answered the question, how are we going to know what the Lord says? Well, we're going to know through the reading of God's Word. I challenge you to do that this, this year, starting today even. Verses are on the back of your bulletin. Next Sunday at, at 6 o'clock, I want to talk about three things. One of them is the Church Center mobile app. I want to show you a couple things that we're going to do new. The next thing I want to talk to you about is Right Now Media, which is a live streaming, a streaming video service. There are tons and tons of great resources that you can use with your kids, with your family, with your small groups, with your whatever. And then the third thing I want to talk about next Sunday night at 6 o'clock is small groups. You know what? COVID is behind us. There is no more powerful tool that we have than for us to come together in small groups and sit around and sit down and talk about the truth of God's Word. There is no more powerful tool. If you want your life to go to a new level in 2023, I'm asking you to come next Sunday night at 6 o'clock, and we're going to talk about small groups. There will be a small group from you, for you, and I don't know who it will be. If nobody else, it will be in my hope. Times. Everybody come to our house. The third thing that I want to talk to you about you is general communication. I mentioned earlier that the pastor of the church has gone on vacation. He won't be back. His leadership team's got to get together and meet. So we're in flux. We're floating. All of us. Me as well. I'm as anxious and excited as you are. We just don't have any answers. And I'm not willing to bother him on his vacation to try to find out. So please be patient with us. We know that, oh shoot, I got it. Jim, I forgot to give uh, Grady the check. Uh, we got to write a check for, to Grady for one more month for this building. i got to talk to him today so it's not late. He doesn't give us a late charge. We've asked him for a break on this last month. Grady, if you're watching, will you give us a break on this last month? <laughs> February, we will not be here when we'll be at the other building. So more to come on that. Thank you for being anxious and excited uh, with me as, as I am. The last thing that I want to share with you is we start a new year and a new chapter and a new, new thing. Everything's new and different. Conspicuously obvious today is that Brandon and Blair were not up here on stage. And they have decided, I, I know that some of you have heard, they have decided that for right now, they and their family are going to go visit some other churches and maybe look for a larger church. I just want to say, if they happen to be listening, I just want to say on behalf of our church how deeply we appreciate the incredible service that they have given to our church for almost six years. They've been singing and said, 
July 17, but they've been with us since the 18, beginning. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, five and a half years that they have, they have served our church so very beautifully. Can I ask you to pray for Brandon and Blair and to pray for their family? And having said that, it's a new thing. It's a new year. I, I would be remiss if I did not say thank you to Praise 247 for bringing the house today. Amen? You've heard me say this, but Bill Gaither always used to say, when somebody leaves the group, we don't replace them. We just go do something different. And I'll just tell you today, it was, it was different. Brandon Blair, if you're watching, that doesn't mean we don't miss you like crazy. But today was something new and something different. And if the Lord decides, it's his church, it's not our church. It's his music, it's his truth, it's his songs. We'll just trust him to do something beautiful with that, will we not? And so I just thank Praise 247 this morning. I don't know if you paid attention to it or, or not, but when I looked down, I said, the entire Praise 247 team this morning was right here at the altar. Amen? Except for Hal. And Crystal, when you get home, you make sure you get him down on his knees at the altar. And you tell him the rest of the praise 2417. Hal is out sick. He's been battling again. And so so just tell Hal. Hal, hey Hal, we missed you this morning. I'm going to tell you what praise 247 missed you, but they brought the house down. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Can you imagine that Hope and I have struggled these last couple of weeks? With all of the changes and the uncertainty of the church going forward and finding out about this news about Brandon and Blair, can you imagine the uncertainty of our lives? Can you imagine the sleepless nights? Can you imagine the tears that we have cried? And I will tell you that the Lord has used the body of Christ to give us courage. Hope said to me when she came home on Friday night after Praise 247 practice for about three hours, she came and came home and said, the Lord is doing a brand new thing in our midst. And we praise you. Will you stand with me? Let's pray. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of Jesus applied. Glory to his name. Father, today we proclaim that the King, the Lord, the King of all kings, he lives. And he is alive. And he is here. Father, thank you for bringing your spirit and meeting with us this morning. We love you. And we praise you. And we understand that because of your incredible mercy and your grace, that we are greatly blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy New Year.